I mentioned previously that Fisher has the best factory production finish in the industry, and I'm happy to stand by that statement, but here's something really cool. These Solomon skis, the S-Lab production from this year, is extremely limited. Solomon has to basically compete with um, all atomic and all Solomon productions for all categories for production time in the factory, and Solomon Racing was not able to get all of the S-Lab skis produced this season that they had demand for. And so these skis are really hard to come by worldwide. And it's just simply starts at the factory production time and allocations of time and materials. So in response, the Solomon racing team decided that they were going to up the ante. They need these skis to be absolutely kick ass. And so what they've done is they've taken all of the S lab skis, all of these new blue fire skis. Um, they're finishing them in the race department. So here's the thing, every factory has a race department that does grinding in the factory and they're doing grinding at a World Cup level. The Solomon Race Department grinding program is designed by this guy Fabio Giusafi who's oh, maybe the best World Cup technician I've ever run into. And he has run his own program for a long time and uh, got hired by Solomon um, when Solomon signed Alex Harvey. He got hired away from Canada, in fact. He'd been with Canada for a season or two. He was waxing for Alex. Solomon hired him when they signed Alex and sort of uh, promised Alex he would still have access to Fabio. Fabio had already been running the grinding program for Solomon as a sort of contract thing on the side for a long time. And since then, they have put um, another Svecom machine in Altenmarkt, just like Fabio's own machine and transferred the grinds over. Well, we can talk later about whether that really works, but the point is in Altenmark, in the race department, they can hand grind skis with Fabio Giuseppe's World Cup grinds. So in the factory, these production grinds, this is assembly line work, this is robotic. The skis are uh, getting picked up and pushed through. Um, not a machine like this, a, a big robotic machine. There are no human hands on them. The machines are running thousands and thousands of pairs of skis and uh, it's, not, um, it's not the same level of attention to detail and quality control um, that we provide here. Like this whole rack of skis is getting B363 plus and it's waiting for the second pass and Jordan's about to start running those things as soon as we cut it. Everything over here and here and there is B363. Second pass coming up. His hands are gonna touch every single one of these things and we're doing a visual inspection of every ski as we go along and it's gotta be right up to the same standard. That doesn't happen in a production line. In a production line, the pressures have to be higher. The whole system can't be as sensitive because there are human hands involved. So hand grinding is a real deal. That means they have to have someone operate the grinding and that means additional personnel. Well, it's easier for them to come up with additional personnel than it is to produce more skis. And so here we have uh, skis with World Cup grinds produced by hand in the factory all of them. If you, no matter where you get it, if you get one of these skis this year, it's going to have a, a hand-produced grind on it, which is pretty astonishing. Really cool. Um, it's worth taking a look at this pattern. I don't know if you can really see it. I'll shoot another video that shows it off just a little better and put it in here. It's kind of a tiger stripe. Uh, you'll see that it's got banding on it where there's bands of structure and then less structure. Let's, uh, let's talk about how that works. All right, so when we make a grind, we're taking a diamond and we're cutting a stone. Can you see my marker? Yeah, in fact, it's over here. Here's the stone, all right? Way down in there on the end of that little piston is the diamond. And the diamond is like these things. We use a bunch of different diamonds depending on what grinds we're making. Um, but the diamond might look like this, and on the end of it, there's a little, you see the black thing in there? That's the diamond itself, it's bedded in steel. Different machines use different configurations of diamonds. Those are Tassari diamonds, actually Milex diamonds made by Lars Svensson. Anyway, the diamond cuts the stone and the stone takes the impression and you end up with little knives on the stone that are gonna cut the ski. And you gotta keep in mind that uh, the pattern inverts because you're cutting a negative onto the stone and then the stone cuts a positive onto the ski. So let's imagine here that um, to cut the stone, we have a stone here, that's the, that's the stone. And the diamond's gonna traverse across 
the stone after getting pushed in, and it's going to cut essentially a thread pattern. It's not true linear. It crosses the ski a little bit, but it's cutting a thread pattern like this. It's going to take me a little while to cut all my threads, just like it does with a stone. It takes a little while. All right. Now, I'm not very good at drawing these lines. They would be straight and totally evenly spaced under real circumstances. But uh, imagine now that you take the same diamond, you come back to this side, you advance it in, and then you cut at a slightly different speed. All right, let's say you cut a little faster and you line up and the, the diamond starts in exactly the same place and it's basically in phase with the previous cut, but it's moving a little faster, so pretty soon it moves out of phase. And then it catches up and it moves back in phase and it's cutting the same cut, and then it moves out of phase. Well, when it's out of phase, it's erasing the little lines, the little knives that got cut previously. Does this make sense? So we cut thread in just like a screw, all right? And then you come and you cut again, and at a slightly different traversing speed, you reinforce some threads and just they, they cut right in the same slot, but then you come out of phase and you blank the others out. So what happens then? When you blank those out, down this whole band, you lose your knives. Right here. All right. Knives gone away. And so when this pattern gets cut onto the ski, it looks like this. Depending on the comparative frequencies, these bands of structure and no structure can be really packed together or really dispersed. On the Tazari machine, we cut in lines per centimeter. So if I were to cut 22 lines per centimeter on the first cut, old school LJ03, and then cut 27 lines per centimeter on the second cut, old school LJ02, what we know is that every centimeter we have five phase transitions. So five, uh, five times it's gonna come in and out of phase because the difference between 22 and 27 is five. So there's gonna be five bands, complete bands of structure to no structure. That's a band right there. Here's another band, here's another band, five of those. So that's gonna be a total of two millimeters over the course of the grind. And the question is, can we see it? on the ski. Here we go. You can see pretty clearly that we've got little bands where the structure is deep and then bands where it's less deep. Anyway, this is a huge investment from Solomon to have uh, produced these handmade structures, World Cup structures on all of their skis. And then we bring them back and we take them right off because once again, we're making North American grinds. I do think this SL22 has uh, the potential to be pretty broadly universal. It's gonna run a little warmer in North America than it will in Europe. They're putting it on universal skis though, so they're intended to run on the warm side. Um, some of the other structures, the most common one we see on the cold skis is their G1 structure, and that is a phenomenal grind in Europe in cold conditions. In North America, it's a little more limited. We've had some really good success with it at times. Other times, maybe not so much. At any rate, Big applause to Solomon for making the effort here, and I think they're going to have a lot of happy customers this year because no matter what, as opposed to their factory finish, which is not the best in the industry, these bases, I guarantee, for skis that are going to be sold in shops, have uh, the best base finish that you can find in the history of uh, retail skis. It's really cool.